welcome, welcome curling fans. We started out with three groups of five teams here at the Curling Masters in Champery 2022 edition. We are down to two teams standing. We are about to watch in the final game here. We are about to watch Team Walter Huskins of Netherlands and they will be playing Team Magnus Ramsfjell from Norway. My name is Lorna Rettig. I will be hosting us through this final game. The team is on a little bit earlier. Everybody's had something to eat, had some brunch over in the restaurant. I can recommend the Eggs Benedict. Very nice, with a kind of foamy mustard. We've had an interesting competition out there. And if you joined us earlier on, you will have seen our featured semi-final where we saw the Norwegian team in front of us, Team Magnus Ramsfjell, really demolish Team Eve Stocker. They hardly put a stone wrong the whole morning. And Stocker's team unbeaten up to that point. But their competition ending at the semi-final stage and over in our other semi-final, it was the Dutch boys. Dumped out also unbeaten. Team Frederick Niemann from Sweden. So really strong competition out there. A lot of close games this weekend and we are now down to the final two teams. It is Team Ramsfjell of Norway who start us off in the first end of the final here of Curling Masters in Champry World Curling Tour event. New territory for this Norwegian team. They have not played in a final here in Champery before. Last year's winners were from Norway. That was the more well-known team of Stefan Wallstadt, of course, representing Norway at Olympics at the end of last season. But Magnus Ramsfjell's team, they just quietly go about beating everybody, you know. They will be tough to get past this afternoon. But if you've been watching curling for a while, and I hope you have, viewer, you will surely remember that this Dutch team, well, three out of the four of them on the ice just now, they won this title in 2019, three years ago. Slightly different constellation they play with now, but if anything, they have improved and strengthened their lineup. I wonder if all that experience from this Netherlands team, I wonder if that will be important this afternoon. Just they've been here before, they know how to win this competition. But as I said, this Norwegian team have been just quietly demolishing everyone. And I'm sure the Norwegians should feel confident. It was a imperious display this morning. Poor old Eve Stocker's team, the Stocker army were out in force for the most popular man in curling, but poor old Stocker's team, they were really kicked off this morning. The Norwegians hardly playing a stone wrong. Maybe you joined us last night. We watched the Dutch boys in their quarter-final game. That was against Team Robota of Germany. Sorry, of Italy, not Germany. We did have a team from Germany here in the competition. And we saw Walter's Netherlands team last night against Team Robota. Also, really strong performance from them. I think we are going to have a really intriguing game here. Netherlands team, famously aggressive. They were really one of the first teams to start winning games and competitions in the, the five rock free guard zone. The last Olympic cycle, we changed up to five rock free guard zone. And they really hit the ground running with that. It really suited their aggressive style of play. But as we saw this morning, the Norwegians just keeping things tidy. Always just a couple of awkward yellows either out front or close to scoring. If 
first throw of the game for the second thrower from Netherlands. Let's say hello to the teams that are out there. So the Orange winners from 2019. That's the team from Netherlands and just showing a lovely double take out there. Lead thrower in this game is Tobias van den Hurk. We have seen alternate Alexander Magan playing with the team as well, all five of them here this weekend. But here in the final, lead thrower Tobias van den Hurk. Second thrower that we've just seen is Lohans Hoekman. Third thrower, Jaap van Dorp. Fourth and skip is Vato Huskins. They are throwing red and throwing yellow and wearing the white uniforms. It's the team from Norway. Lead thrower is Galten Ipstad. Second thrower, Bendy Ramsfield. Third thrower, Martin Sesaka. Fourth and skip is Magnus Ramsfield. Magnus, really the MVP this morning. He had some tricky stuff to look at, but didn't blink once. And Valter sensibly deciding we're only in the first end here. We don't really want to get into a mess this early in the game. Let's just clean things up. But Laurent's not quite finding the right angle there. I think he wanted that red to roll more towards the edge of the sheet. And this is what we saw Norway do this morning. Just really good shot placement. Doing the simple stuff very, very well. And just forcing a couple of slightly wrong angles, a couple of half shots from their opposition. And they'll be hoping to do that to the previous champions today. Stefan and Wallstad's team not here this weekend. But I'm sure they will be delighted to see their Norwegian compatriots flying the flag again in the final this year. Another nice tidy throw from Norway. As we saw against Stocker's team this morning. Norway doesn't need to score here. They don't necessarily expect to score here. They just want to frustrate Netherlands. They don't want Netherlands to start putting a whole bunch of reds in behind cover. And as long as that yellow is there with a guard out front, Netherlands have to do something about that if they want to score with their last throw. And as we saw this morning, Norway just set it up to maybe try to get a miss. They did get a miss in that first end, and they really kept their foot on the gas from then on. Second throw in this first end for Martin Sesaka. I hope my Norwegian pronunciation is improving. Certainly, these two teams could be the ones with the most challenging names for me. Although, we have teams from all over in this competition. We are actually, I miscounted earlier, we have nine countries represented, including a team who have traveled all the way from Kazakhstan to play in our competition. They have slightly difficult names to pronounce. But very grateful to the Kazakh team for traveling all this way to support our competition. Very, very young team, most of them still juniors, still under 21. And really showing good courage to come here to learn from these top teams. It takes good courage to put yourself out there and to stand up against these top teams. We were really happy to see the young team from Kazakhstan come to support our competition here. And we've also had teams from Italy, France, here in Switzerland, Scotland, Germany, and Sweden. Always a fun competition here in Champery. And it's a very fun town as well. If you've never visited Champery, I fully recommend it. 
And Jack, the competition chief, he always organises a lovely sunny weekend for us as well, which is always very nice. He seems to somehow manage to book the good weather every time we come. Well, a lovely shot from Jat van Dorp there, removing both of the Norwegian counters. But still a whole pile of granite out front. Nice throw from Norway there. Again, Norway, they don't need to score this end. They don't need to pick up any points. But by leaving that yellow in there, superstar from Magnus Ramsfield picking up where he left off this morning, leaving that yellow there, that puts pressure on Bartok Huskins. He has to outcount that yellow. No easy way to that yellow, actually. So that's a particularly nice shot from Magnus. He'll be pleased with that. First throw of the final for Bartok Huskins. Walter has thrown fourth stone for this team for a while. And for a little while it was Jaap van Dorp there. He's now vice skip. It was Jaap who was skipping and Walter throwing fourth. But the past couple of seasons it has been Walter skipping and throwing fourth. And yeah, it seems to be, seems to be working for them. Had a very successful weekend here. But that's why Valta is fourth thrower. He is really deadly with that T line weight. Not at all scared to have stones in play, this Netherlands team. And there you are, Norway. You have your answer. You asked the question of Netherlands. And what a, what a reply from Walter Huskins announcing himself into this final. Walter's team from Netherlands, they got their revenge on Team Neiman this morning. They met each other already in the round robin. And it was the young Swedish team of Frederick Neiman. Not Daniel Neiman, as I mistakenly said earlier. It was Frederick Neiman's team from Sweden. They beat Walter's team 9-5 in the round robin. But it was the Orange, the Dutch team. They got their revenge this morning in the semi-final. Very close game again. And a brave throw from Magnus. And definitely that yellow, clearly closer to the centre. But I think that didn't curl as much as they wanted to. I think Walter will be able to see quite a lot of that yellow. Yes, he can. So just a pretty similar throw from Walter. Again, he won't be wanting a, a big weight here. He doesn't need to, to throw loads of weight at this. He just wants to punch that yellow back half a meter only. But similar kind of line that he just threw. Last stone of this first end. Valter happy with the brush position. Not an easy stone, this. It probably looks a bit easier than it actually is. Right, let's all take a deep breath and try again, shall we? OK. Now let's have the final stone of this first end for Walter Huskins of Netherlands. As we see, just that gentle weight. That stone's really starting to curl. Can the sweepers hold it? Oh, they can't. And golly. 
didn't we just see that this morning, viewers? Norway, all they could do was try to set themselves up, try to tempt Netherlands into a miss, and look what happened again. As we said, that was a more difficult shot than it yeah. maybe looked, actually. Couldn't throw a big weight at it, couldn't see all of that Norwegian shot, and Norway again tempts their opposition into a bit of a mistake. And that is a steal for the Norwegians in this first end of the final here in Champery. So after one end in the final of the Champery Masters, it is Ruskens of Netherlands zero, Ramsfjell of Norway one. So, a little bit of a surprise there in that first end. Netherlands playing some really nice stuff. Keeping stones in play, letting things build up, but these Norwegians are just not going away. They just continually keep it, keep it simple, play the simple stuff really nicely. Just keep stones in play to put that pressure on, and that pressure has been working for them. They've got a few mistakes from their opposition this morning. And starting out with a nice little steal of one point there in the first end. So a bright start again for Norway. Oh, there's Sue in the chat. Hello, Sue. Good morning to you in Michigan. Yeah, Sue's... I think... What did we decide to? I think you're almost at super fan status, isn't it? Sue's a very committed member of the virtual club. If you want to say hello or you want to tell us which team you're cheering for today, everyone's welcome. And look at that viewer again. Lovely, tidy start from Norway. This is what we saw in end one. And it ended up working out for them. Same again, please, Norway. Just keep those stones in play. Just keep frustrating the Dutch. For Tobias van den Hurk. A lovely response from him. He's done his job. He's set up two beautiful stones, a lovely guard in the corner there, and swinging a stone buried in behind that, exactly short of T. Gold star for you, Tobias van den Hurk. Now it's up to your teammates to make use of that perfect start. There are some big names who have won this competition before. As we said last year, it was another Norwegian team, Stefan Wallstad's team, who represented at Olympics for Norway, but this team, Magnus Ramsfjell's team, They've been around for a few years now as well. I'm not surprised to see them starting to make semis and finals. They will be really keen to put another Norwegian team on the winning roster here. And yeah, some big names. We've had Yannick Schvaller the year before that. 2019, the year before that, was this team in front of us from Netherlands. Peter de Cruz, Niklas Sedin. A couple of Canadian teams came from Scotland. So yeah, we've had some big names winning this competition. That is, you're in some pretty good company. Either, oh, if I, either of these teams putting their name on the winner's trophy, but again, just the curl catching out the Dutch boys. The Norwegians have really got to grips with this arena ice. You sometimes get some surprising results here in the arena. 
there you get a nice view of the the barrier around the, the side. And yeah, we've got spectator seating and so on, and it can just affect the air, the currents of the air, the temperature of the ice and so on. And sometimes it can take teams a little bit longer to get used to it. And you can end up with some surprising results, but the Norwegians absolutely at home on this arena ice. And at this very early stage, the Norwegians probably having the, the brighter start, but we are only in N2. So that was a lovely setup from Tobias van den Hurk. Lorenz Hoekman just catching the guard on the way past, though, with his first throw. He wants to make up for that here. He does, and he gets a nice roll oh, a bit further than they wanted. And actually, that red looks like it did touch the bumper. I expect a lot of the ends will be like this today, viewers. As we said, both of these teams very happy with just keeping stones in play, out aggressive playing each other. I think we shall have a lot of nice stones in play. I think this will be a nice close final. The two games we've watched already together. Last night's game featured Kluskin's team and it was a very professional clinical performance from them. And this morning's game featured Magnus Ramsfeld's team. Same thing, very clean, very professional performance. I think we have two very well matched teams out there. Interesting. Walter was asking Jaap van Dort which handle he wants, and I would have gone for the other one, but Jaap van Dort knows his own throw very well. He's more comfortable with the clockwise throw. They were going for the double take out there. And that in to out throw, just curling a little bit too much. And we should also credit, of course, Gauta Nebstad, who has been setting up Norwegian end, the Norwegian ends beautifully every time. And really setting up his teammates for success out there. Nice throw from Bendy Kramsfeld. They had to be a little bit careful with that. Just to control the line with the sweeping. And again, we see Netherlands not exactly in trouble, but certainly not being left alone to build an end. The Norwegians just keeping play towards the centre, not letting the Netherlands build stones over on the, the sides of the sheep. This looks nice from Van Dorp. That is a lovely shot from him. Really nice weight, very controlled weight, and handed it over to his sweepers so that they can do something about the line. That's a lovely view, so you can see that red really tucked in beautifully behind that guard, but that guard quite close to the hog line. That's the thick red horizontal line. And Norway definitely thinking that there's space behind that yellow. You can certainly curl a stone in and reach that red. Again, you can't throw too much weight because you need to give the stone a chance to curl. Yeah. 
As we saw this morning, though, there was must have felt to poor old Eve Stalker's team must have felt like there was nothing much they could do. Every time they played a lovely shot like that, Magnus Ramsfield would just carefully come along and dismantle it. First throw of Skip's Stones here in the second end of the final from the Curling Masters in Champagny 2022 edition. We started out with 15 countries representing, sorry, 15 teams representing nine countries. We are down to the top two teams, one from Norway, one from Netherlands. I think that was about as good as Magnus Ramsfield could have done with that stone. As we said, he couldn't throw huge weight at that because the stone needed to curl a bit. And it was a lovely throw from Jaap van Dort previously. But that's punched that red out into the open and behind T. So good result for Ramsfield. First throw of the second end for Walter. He can really set himself up here to try to score more than one. A shout of clean is always happy to hear if you're a sweeper. That mostly means the line looks pretty nice from the other end. And really nice double take out there, or not quite, but he's done enough there, Walter. Good separation on those red stones. Yeah, but you could make the double take out, but it's awfully difficult. And I think here in the second end, you don't want to take too many risks. But super shot there from Walter to really set himself up, give himself a chance with this final stone to try to score more than one. Remember the... The kind of default situation is to score one with last shot. Yeah, on the other hand, there's no reason not to try for the double because in a worst case, you're removing one of the reds. Should be. Well, in a worst case, you'll remove nothing at all, but I don't expect that to happen. So yeah, to some extent, there's no risk to trying this double. I think I prefer this call. Should certainly remove at least one here, Magnus Ramsfield. I'm not far off getting two, worth a try. But that lovely setup throw from Jaap van Dorp, doing the damage there. And giving Walter Huskins, I think he just has to be pretty much fully in the house. He needs to outcount that yellow just next to Jaap van Dorp's foot. And it will be two big points for Netherlands. <coughs> you can see how hard the teams have to work to try to even give themselves a chance to score two. It's really tough out there. But if you only manage to score one point with your last stone, well, you won't win games by doing that. If you score one with your last shot, then opposition scores one with their last shot, etc., etc. You will end up with a score of four each after eight ends. And that's why you'll see the teams working really hard to try to pick up more than one point when they have that important last stone. And Netherlands with a huge chance here, but the sweepers are standing right off it. Is that going to stop in time? A 
Phew. It does. Yeah, at this level, you will hardly get a simpler shot than that. Just needing to find fully 12 foot. Bartok Huskins does do that. It hangs on at the end. And that is a big score of two for Netherlands. So after two ends here in our final at Curling Masters Champagny World Curling Tour event, it is Team Bartok Huskins of Netherlands, two. Team Magnus Ramsfjell of Norway, one. We are in the third end of our final here at the Curling Masters in Champry. If you were just joining us, maybe you were joining for 12.30. The game was originally scheduled for then, but both teams off in good time this morning and deciding to start the game at 12 instead. I can see Jeroen in the chat. He is cheering for Netherlands. Jeroen Wortel. That sounds like quite a, a Dutch name. Forgive me if I've mispronounced it. And that was a really well worked score of two there for Netherlands in that second end. I think that's the first time today that Norway have been behind in the game. Let's see what they do with their last stone now in this third end. This is the first time in the game that Norway now have last stone. And we're seeing completely the reverse tactics that we saw in the second end. So instead of playing away from the centre, try to keep the centre clear for Bartos' last stones, we shall see Tobias van den Hoek playing towards the centre so that it isn't clear for Magnus Ramsfjell's final stones. The sweeper is saying that this one is going beyond T. Not very much. That's fine from Tobias van den Hoek. Definitely the Norwegians can follow that line that Tobias Stone had, but the Norwegians may find themselves locked in at the centre. This is the risk playing towards the centre when you have last stone. To get that one stone in towards the centre. Not so difficult, but to get more than one stone in at the centre can become difficult. And that's a nice clever play from the Norwegians. Nice throws there from Gauta Nebsta. There are now two yellows already in the house, quite nicely separated. And Netherlands do not want these yellows building up. Smart stuff from Norway, keeping Netherlands away from the centre. And that's why you see Magnus indicating he wants to remove that red, but he actually wants to roll away from the centre and keep Netherlands busy over there so that Netherlands not able to use that centre guard. Ben. Ben. 
first throw in the third end for Bendik Ramsfjell, second thrower from Norway. Again, that nice control weight, and he gets it perfectly. Norway setting up the scent nicely, keeping their yellows far away from each other. Again, I think there probably is a double takeout if your life depended on it, but that would not be the the wise shot for Netherlands to go for right now. And doing the right thing by just hitting the open yellow. Maybe trying to get a roll towards centre. Netherlands are happy if the centre is all blocked for Magnus's last throw. Nice. Exchanging hits out there. Netherlands trying to hit and roll towards the centre to try to make it difficult for Ramsfeld's last throw. And Norway trying to roll away from the centre, trying to keep it clear for Ramsfeld's last throw. Have they overcooked this one? Oh, they have. Big sweep there from Valter and that Yellowstone just rolling out too far. Giving Jack Van Dorp the chance to now remove that remaining yellow. Sounds like Walter asking for an 11 second stone. That's a stone that will take 11 seconds to pass between the near hog line, the big thick red line that Jaap van Dorp is passing now. And they want that stone to take 11 seconds between yep. that first hog line and the far away one that's coming into view just now. So where are you counting viewers? Was that an 11 second stone? Nice careful throw from Jaap van Dorp. Replacing the yellow with the red. What a difference then, that those few centimetres, that yellow rolling out rather than staying in, what a difference that made. Not at all, so much danger now for Netherlands. That's a nice throw from Martin Sesakar. And he did manage to get a little roll back towards the, the centre, so as you were. Again, Jaap van Dorp can see just over half of this stone. Copy paste for him. But no one's sweeping for curl this time. And mm, that little bit of cover on the Norwegian stone, that was enough. The guard doing its job there. Just fooling Jaap van Dorp a bit. Looks like Jaap van Dorp just popped that stone just a little wide. And it didn't curl back. So advantage back to Netherlands now. They have a big opportunity to put a second yellow back in play now. A bit of a mistake from them earlier on, with the yellow rolling just out of the circles, just out of the house. But tempting a mistake out of Netherlands. And another chance now to put a second yellow in play. 
Nicely done from Norway. Their priority is to not leave a double takeout possible for Netherlands, and they've done that very nicely. Not really a double takeout available there, so Walter going to hit that wider yellow, and again, he wants to ideally roll right to the centre to put that pressure back on Norway. Walter going for the hit and roll towards the centre. This sounds good from the line call. So tidy enough from Walter. That red not quite hanging on though. Overrolling a little bit. And Norway still looking quite handy in this end to score a nice big two. Looks like Walter will have a chance to do that same shot again. I think Magnus just indicating that he wants to put that yellow back in pretty much the same spot. Constant communication. The sweepers calling ahead to see how much weight does the stone have, how far is it going to travel, and vice get Gauta Nebstra up in the, the house, just keeping them keeping them right with the line. So pretty much where it was before. It doesn't really matter that that stone slipped behind T. Important was to keep that separation. But Walter Huskins, he tried this shot already with his first throw. And it over curled a bit. They swept it quite late, actually. And I wonder if they have learned from that. Maybe sweep a little bit earlier and then lift the, lift the brushes and let the stone curl towards the end. But let's see. This should be a repeat of his first throw for Walter. Indeed, sweeping a bit earlier this time. He's got it this time. Super shot from Walter Huskins and Team Netherlands. Absolutely learning from that first throw. And what a peach that is. He could hardly have gone up and placed it much better. I have a few Netherlands fans in the chat today. Penning Meester. Also saying go, go, Holland. And really nice stuff from them. And now asking the question then of the Norwegians. Final throw in this third end. call right on, on that throw. So Falter's lovely final shot there did its job. And a dangerous situation, but finally 
big smiles from the ne Netherlands. Indeed, they got themselves out of danger in that third end, and the Norwegians will be a little bit annoyed about that. They had good position there in that third end, but finally, it is a score of one to Norway, and that means after three ends, here at the Curling Masters Champery in our final game, it is Team Vardochuskins of Netherlands 2, Team Magnus Ramsfjell from Norway 2. We just saw our sponsors flashing up on the screen there. They make it a very attractive competition always for these top teams. The winners of this game, they will pick up a lovely big prize of 6,000 Swiss francs. The runners up, they can console themselves with a prize of 4,500 Swiss francs. I'm sure neither of the team's thinking about that just now, but big prizes on offer here. Our two semi finalists this morning, they won 2,950 Swiss francs each. It's always disappointing to go out at the semi final stage because you don't get to play in the final and you had to get up early on Sunday morning and you didn't get to have a beer on Saturday night. But they can also console themselves with a nice prize of nearly 3,000 Swiss francs and all of our quarter finalists yesterday evening, all of them win 1,900 Swiss francs. So well worth qualifying for quarter final in this World Curling Tour event. The game at this level getting always really more professional and that involves more competitions, more travelling, more hotel expenses and these boys do eat a lot of food. So well worth qualifying for quarterfinals here. And that's thanks to the generosity of the competition sponsors. Bright start again from Galta Nebstadt. He and Tobias van den Hurk having a real ding dong battle at lead throw. Both of them throwing just about perfectly so far. That guard out front still protected by free guard zone. This is only the fourth throw. Netherlands can move it, but it can't go out of play. But no, Toby is nowhere near it. The sweeper's getting it around really nicely. And Toby is getting a beautiful roll. He's really putting on an exhibition with his throws in this final game. Look at that. Just gently bumps that yellow through and gets a perfect roll behind cover. Gold star for you, Tobias van den Hurk. We shall play eight ends here in this final. If scores are tied after eight ends, we will play an extra end until we get a winner. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes to an extra end, viewers. And this is only the, the fifth stone, so free guard zone is still operational. It is now finished after that fifth stone, but I think that's the, the first oopsie from then de Kramsfjell, yeah. simply bumping in that Netherlands guard. Yeah, 
I think he was trying to just just move it around a little bit, even though still protected by a free guard zone, not allowed to go out of play. So what are the, the choices here? That centre guard is only helping Norway. The temptation would be to remove that right now. And it looks like indeed that's what they are going to do. They're Valter is looking over his shoulder because it's now a yellow stone out front there that you would be driving back into those two reds. And at this level, that's a very makeable shot, but I still think this is the right idea. That centre guard is only ever dangerous for Netherlands. They do have two reds in play. And yeah, ask the question of Norway. Norway, uh, a raised takeout on those two reds, never easy. I think this makes sense. I think if Norway start messing around with trying to outdraw things around that guard, I think that's when they could find themselves in trouble. And I think there's no reason not to try to drive this yellow back onto the reds, or at the very least can remove this guard, which he does. Varta immediately indicating the other side of the ice, let's keep another red far away from that pair. We have Vanessa in the chat. She says Netherlands all the way. A nice orangey fire there as well. They certainly do seem to have a, a fire in the belly, these Dutch boys. They won this competition in 2019. They would love to win it again. It was a Norwegian team that were champions last year, but it was Stefan Wallstad's team. Magnus Ramsfeld, though, caught on the heels of the Olympic Norwegian team. And I think we're about to see why it was a wise idea to remove that guard with the previous stone. Those reds really close together. Yeah, to all intents and purposes, those reds so close together that they kind of make one stone. Fairly straightforward to remove with just one throw. So now instead of potentially looking at three points to the Netherlands, it should be a maximum of two. Happy shout of clean typically means the line is really nice all by itself, which it is. And gosh, look at that. Two perfectly separated stones. I think they're well, what, one or two centimeters away from being dead level. The point of that is dead level stones. No double takeout possible there. Oh, 
Farewell. Nice easy throw from Martin Sesaka, but advantage Netherlands in this fourth end. Just that early loose shot from Norway. Giving them a bit of work to do to get back out of trouble in this end. Netherlands. Again, they want to roll this red far away from their other red, try to keep that a bit safer. And double takeout, definitely possible. We will see Magnus Ramsfield have a go at it. Again, he may as well. There's no risk to having a go at the double takeout here. He will probably have two goes at it. He's also a fairly tall chap, is Magnus Ramsfeld. So he also has big long levers to do a nice strong leg drive. And he's got it beautifully. And you may have heard the Dutch saying nice. A very, very sporting sport is curling. You will hear the opposition congratulating the team on a nice shot, well played. So Magnus Ramsfield getting Norway out of trouble, not for the first time today. And you can see he's, he doesn't even need to wait at the other end. Galta Nebstadt, he will know exactly what to do with Norway's final throw here. But three stones to come, two for Netherlands, one for Norway. Bartha Huskins, first things first, he needs to remove this yellow and have this red hanging around. Again, nice careful throw. They want this red hanging around. They don't want this red rolling out. But Magnus Ramsfield already down at the throwing end. He could anticipate that shot up front, knowing that his final throw of this fourth end He's going to have a, a hit and stick. No trouble there. I think we shall see Bartok Huskins instead now want to blank this end. As we said, ideally, you don't really want to give up last stone, give the last stone advantage back to the opposition if you only score one. And it would be quite easy for Bartok to score one point here. He would just play exactly the same shot he's just thrown. That nice controlled way. Punch the yellow through, his red stone sitting right in front. That would be an easy throw for him, and I don't think we will see him do that. He doesn't want to only pick up one point. I think we shall see Netherlands more throw a bigger weight, yep. because now they do want this red to roll out. Yep. Yep. Art. Tip top says Jan van Dorp, and there we go. Just making sure they do want that red to roll out. That's on purpose. No score, it will be Netherlands who keep last stone and they will try again to try to use that last stone for more than one point. But at the halfway then, after four ends here, at our final in the Curling Masters in Champery, the World Curling Tour event, at the halfway stage, it's all close. It is Bartok Huskins of Netherlands 2, Magnus Ramsfeld of Norway 2. Yeah, we 
If you are just joining us, welcome, welcome. Now, you didn't fall into a time loop. It's not that the famously chatty Netherlands have suddenly started playing like they've got a train to catch. We started the game a little bit early. And we are halfway through. We are in end five of the Curling Masters here in Champagny. World Curling Tour event. We started with 15 teams. There are two teams left standing. That is Vato Huskins of Netherlands champions in 2019. And Magnus Ramsfeld's team from Norway. In new territory here in the final at Champagny. And as we thought, it is a pretty tight game out there. If we play eight ends and scores are tied, we will play an extra end until we have a winner. And what do you think, viewer? We said at the beginning, I would not be at all surprised if we get an extra end in this game. And I'm standing by that. At the halfway point, it is two points each. I would not be at all surprised if we do indeed end up with four points each after eight ends or something like that. And Galton Ipsta and Tobias van den Hoek again, giving us a real master class in setting these ends up. It is Netherlands who retain last on advantage in this fifth end. And what's their objective? Broadly speaking, if you have last stone, you would work very hard to score more than one. But what we may see Valter doing, we may see Valter consider that, hmm, in an eight-end game, we've got four ends left. If Netherlands score here, then that means there would be potentially, or statistically likely, two more last stones for Norway and only one for them. Whereas if, if Valter could ever play or ever find a blank end here again, yep. that would mean there yep. would be statistically likely to be two last stones in ends six and eight for Netherlands and only one for Norway. So actually a blank end here would suit Netherlands beautifully, but golly gosh, what a throw from Bendy Kramsfield. Some lovely stuff from him. Just removing that dangerous red that was out front. And for an encore, leaving Norway line two. Real high quality game out there. That's what we expected. We've seen both of these teams in action already this weekend. We watched the Netherlands boys last yep. night in quarterfinal action yep. against young team Robota from Italy. And we watched team Magnus Ramsfield this morning just stamping all over. Poor Yves Stalker's team. Right, this is a nice aggressive call of yours. 
The other option would be to just hit the open red, just keep numbers of reds hanging around as low as possible. But Norway kind of following the Brazilian football approach, which is okay. If, if you score two goals, we'll score three. Or if you score three goals, we'll score four. They're just all about aggressive stuff, and that seems to be the Norwegian idea here as well, is okay. Let's see you get a second point if we keep playing towards the centre. As we said, it can be a risk. If you have the last stone and you're playing towards the centre, that can be a risk. That scoring area can get awfully small, awfully quickly. But we've seen Netherlands gamble this way and we've seen it pay off for them. And that Norwegian stone has found a decent spot, but just coming up a little bit short. Sweeping out of hand with this stone. And Alhans again just finding an edge of that guard. So Norway's bluff again, coming off for them. Yeah, we've spoken about Netherlands' objective for this end. They would be quite happy with another blank end. Norway. They'll be thinking of a reverse. They want to force Netherlands to use this last stone. to red. Really nice throw from Martin Sesaker. And Norway not really trying to score with those yellows. They're just leaving those yellows lying around to put the pressure onto Netherlands to use up that last stone. All of those yellows out in the open, no guards out front anymore. So straightforward enough for Netherlands to remove them. But Norway's strategy, they just want to try to force the Netherlands to have to use that last stone to score one point, and then they will get last stone advantage back. And that stone not quite finding the right curl, and that means uh, Norway, sorry, are still lying. Two nice shots there. The balance in this game really going backwards and forwards. Both teams doing an awful lot of good stuff out there. Both teams really setting their, their ends up really nicely. And then a real game of cat and mouse, just trying to get a bit of a miss from the opposition, trying to get them to get the wrong angle. That's another nice throw from Martin Sesaka. What that does is removes that tricky double takeout possibility. And this is looking nice for Norway. They just want to force Netherlands to use up last stone, they want to force Netherlands to score only one point with that all-important last stone. Yeah. 
Oh, and that's a lovely shot from Jan van Dorp. That is exactly what they said they wanted to do, was remove not only that centre guard, but that pesky yellow all the way over at the side there. And he made that look quite easy at Van Dort, but that was a very tricky call. And that has taken a lot of pressure off Netherlands now. So the blank potentially back in play here. Now it's Norway's turn to make a decision. They can, again, hit that open red, or they could go flat out aggressive and guard their own shot stone. But I think this makes sense. It is making it a little bit easier potentially for a blank end for Netherlands. I think that was the right call. Yes, there's definitely a double takeout possibility for Netherlands here, and that would bring a blank end back into play, which Norway doesn't really want. They don't want to give Netherlands last stone control in the sixth end and potentially in the all-important eighth end. But I think it would have been wildly over-aggressive to start guarding up that shot right there in the centre and leave that red, even though it was behind T, leave that red in the back ring. That would have been dangerously over-aggressive to leave that situation and throw up a guard. So I think cool heads prevailing out there. We have seen some smart stuff from this Norwegian team also this morning. And again, Magnus Ramsfjell anticipating his final throw in this fifth end. No need to even confer with his vice skip, Galta Nebstba. First throw of the fifth end for the fourth and skip from the Netherlands. Vato Yes, yes, yes. And he doesn't make that double takeout. So either way, Magnus Ramsfield was anticipating removing this red, whether Vato made the double or not. Norway shot doesn't change then, but this could just put a little more pressure on Walter's final throw for Netherlands. So a nice careful wait. They want this yellow to hang around. They want both of these yellows to be in play. And again, that will try to force Netherlands to use up their last stone. Perfect shot from Norway then. And by going for the bigger weight, by going for the double takeout, that tells us that Vato is again trying to blank this end. If perhaps the Netherlands could also say to themselves, hmm, this is a bit of a difficult shot, let's just take one point instead then there's no need to throw a big weight at that front yellow. You would play the more controlled weight and just make sure you just punch that yellow through and sit in front yourself. But I would expect, even if Alto doesn't make the double takeout here, and even if that means maximum one point to Norway, that's not the end of the world because then, again, Netherlands would retain that all-important last shot in the sixth end. I think this is therefore the right call. Let's go for the double. And worst case, we lose a point, which is okay, actually. Yep. Last yep. throw of the fifth end. So he 
almost makes the double, but that red does hang around as well. And Norway, finally then, they meet their objective for end five. They have forced the Netherlands to throw a tricky double takeout, not quite making it and not quite rolling out. And that means that in the all-important sixth end, often decisive in an eight-end game, in this all-important sixth end, it is now Magnus Ramsfjell from Norway who has last stone. That's a score of one for Netherlands, meaning Vater Huskin's team from Netherlands, three. Magnus Ramsfjell's team of Norway, two. So viewers, what do you think? We are in the sixth end of the final here in Champery. Neither team making it easy for each other. Both the teams having to fight for every point, having to do a lot of work, even just to put one point up on the board. We thought this one has a good chance of going to an extra end, and it still does, doesn't it? We're in end six out of eight ends here. The sixth end. Often decisive. Can really dictate the rest of the game. So it is the Netherlands who have last stone. Sorry, no, it's, it's Norway who has last stone now in the sixth end. They will anticipate Netherlands having last stone in the seventh end, and Norway having that all important last stone in the eighth end. I fancy we will see Norway going aggressive here. If Norway could score two, that would make the score 4-3. If Norway could force Netherlands to one point again, like they just did, that would make the score four each. But guess what? It would be Norway with the all-important final throw in the eighth end. Therefore, I think we shall see Norway working very hard to try to get two points here in the sixth end. Try to force the issue with Netherlands, force Netherlands to take one in the seventh end and have scores level with last stone in the eighth end. That's their most likely way to win the game from here. Big score of two here in the sixth end would put them well on the way to winning this championship for the first time, the Norwegians. Again, nice throwing from Galton Epstad. Sorry, that was uh, Tobias van den Hurk for Netherlands. Those stones nicely lined up in the centre. And now we see Galton Epstad setting up what they expect to be point number two, and then they will turn their attention to the center of the sheet. So first things first, let's put a shot in behind cover, but oh, I think that's, again, that's about the first shot he's missed, Galta. But that one just coming up short, and I wonder how that might change the complexion of this end. Free guard zone, not over yet. What do you do if you're in Netherlands? We know what Norway wants to do. We know what their ideal path to the championship is. What does Netherlands want to do? They want to make sure they want to make sure that Norway cannot score two points here. And that's why they're talking about the more aggressive idea. Let's put up a double guard. Netherlands would love to force Norway to give up last stone again by only scoring one. So pretty much what happened to themselves in end five. If they can grab last stone back, 
by forcing Norway to only one point. That suits them marvellously. And the best way of making sure Norway cannot score two is to block up this centre here. Norway we need to do some cleaning here. None of those guards, none of those guards really helping Norway. Den der er vel lige for to. Ja. Jeg føler, at det ligger ikke ganske naturligt. Ja. Så det er rundt på afstand her, rigtig godt. Ivan. Aldrig. Så det er 36 meter, så 40. Det er kun bare. Giving ourselves some space to get stones in here, otherwise Netherlands are going to continue just blocking the path. And from where Magnus Ramsfield's broom was before the shot, I think that's exactly what he said. He wanted to indeed just bounce off both of those yellows, spring one into the house. He's done it beautifully. And for an encore, he has punched that red out into the open. So 13 out of 10 for that shot for Bendy Kramsfield. He doesn't look particularly pleased with himself, does he? Maybe that's his normality, throwing such nice stones game after game. Stone. We are in end six of at least eight ends here in this final. We just saw a real peachy shot from Bendy Kramsfield, really moving stones around, setting up much better angles for Norway. And can he consolidate that lovely throw with his second shot here? Hmm, and maybe a couple of nerves starting to creep in. But the level of difficulty of these shots having to be really precise. But that is an yeah. uncharacteristic miss from Ben de Kramsfjell. Yeah. At least temporarily then, yeah. handing advantage to the Netherlands. Yeah. And now it is Netherlands who just want to keep these reds in play. The more reds in play, the more pressure there is on Norway, the more likely they are to be able to force Norway to score one point only with last stone, give up last stone. That's what they're trying to do. Netherlands doesn't need to score this end. They are simply trying to frustrate the Norwegians. And the best way to frustrate them is to keep stones close to that center, keep a bunch of reds in play, and a, a little bit of luck there for, for Jaap van Dorp stone, but it has found a really nice spot. As you saw, it overcurled a little bit. 
but it had exactly the right weight, and that means they were able to execute a good plan B. Big sweep for Ramsfield. Gets rid of two of those dangerous reds in front. Takes off that stone that was in the back ring, which is unlikely to be important later. Still work to do for Norway, though, if they are to score two here. Strategy straightforward for Netherlands. They're already lying to red. The best way to frustrate Norway, the best way to avoid giving Norway any chance to score two points is to keep playing towards the centre. Keep those reds towards that centre line. That's a great shot from Japan Dorp. And now Norway do look like they're in a little bit of trouble here. Netherlands, as we say, they don't need to score here, but if Netherlands did steal even one point, that would make the score four points to two to Netherlands. With only two ends left to play, and that would put them in quite a strong position. So as we thought, the sixth end often very involved. Typically a lot of stones in play in the sixth end. Typically both teams really going for it. And a huge drive out from Martin Seesacker. And that's certainly improved matters. But Norway could find it difficult to get a second yellow in there. And as we said, that's fine for, for Netherlands. But yeah, Norway were starting to look in a bit of trouble there. Norway really don't want Netherlands to pick up a steal here. That would make the score 4-2 with only two ends to play. And at this level, that could be quite decisive. So important that Norway get something on the board here. But nice play in the sixth end from Netherlands. I can see AR Maxi in the chat. I'm not sure which team you're supporting AR, or maybe you're just enjoying good curling. If you want to say hi in the chat or tell us which team you're supporting, or if you have any questions or fun facts for us, we love that sort of thing here in the virtual club. But advantage Netherlands here in the sixth end. Really nicely played from them. Not letting Nor Norway settle. As we said, Norway would love to score two points here in the sixth end, but I'm not sure where that's coming from at the moment. And Walter will be looking to lock that door. That's fine from Netherlands. They don't need to take risks. They don't need to try to get a red in to beat that yellow. Remember, minus one for Netherlands, as we said at the beginning of this end. 
is absolutely fine enough for them. So yeah, that anti-clockwise handle, there is nothing for Norway going on there. What can they do? Netherlands quite happy to give up one point. Netherlands not bothered about that yellow right in the centre. Netherlands are bothered about blocking up any chance to score two. And that's what Norway will be currently discussing, is how can they give themselves a chance to still score two points? Netherlands happy to give away one. Three stones to come in the sixth end. Two for Norway, one only for Netherlands. So it's a good job we started a little bit earlier on this game. We started about 10 past 12 rather than 12.30 because, as is often the case, the sixth end taking almost as long as the first half of the game. Magnus Ramsfield, fourth and skip for Norway. He's had, had a, a very good day at the office so far. And the Norwegians will be looking for a little bit of magic from him in the sixth end to try to find a way in to score a second point. So doesn't find it with his first throw, but that's a stone he could use to, there you can see at this angle, that's a stone he could use to maybe try to promote with his final throw. And I think he might have to because Walter is eyeing up red onto yellow and punching that yellow through and that will give Magnus Ramsfeld, a really tough final throw. So Netherlands can really twist the knife a bit here, put all kinds of pressure on Norway, make sure that Norway are fighting hard to even make one point, never mind two. Yeah, don't discuss too much, lads. Yeah, I think if you would just play that red in the eight foot in the white circle, if you would just play that straight onto the yellow, I don't think there's too much risk to that. I would punch the yellow through, and then you would force Norway to have to promote one of those yellows on the clockwise handle. Walter can see all of this red out front. And he, again, he doesn't need a huge weight here. He needs to be accurate. He just needs to punch that yellow beyond the four foot. That is all. And then it will be Netherlands line three. And Magnus Ramsfeld will be facing a really tough one. As I said, though, Balto needs to be accurate. He doesn't need to be big with this weight. Oh, and a bit of a let off for Norway. Phew, if you're a Norwegian fan, then your little prayer to the curling gods worked beautifully. And that's a 
at this level, yeah, Valter is frustrated with that. That was a bad miss for them there. That was a very makeable shot, and that would have put all kinds of pressure on the Norwegians. Whereas now, Norway have a very makeable shot to score two. A little bit out of nowhere. So as if by magic, the original objective for Norway to use this last stone in the sixth end to score a big two here is back on the cards. We need a big shot from Magnus Schramsfjell here. He must have surely breathed a huge sigh of relief, Magnus Schramsfjell, seeing that that shot from Netherlands didn't come off. And they're now indeed trying to promote that yellow out front. Promote it to the forefoot. He's not far off. Oh, a brave effort from Magnus. Very difficult, that shot. It was quite a, uh, quite a big angle he needed. And he had no backing or anything. So a brave effort from Magnus. Must be breathing a bit of a sigh of relief that he had that shot to go for at all. That could have looked a lot worse, but yeah, finally, it is Netherlands who will breathe a bit of a sigh of relief for that sixth end. They got what they wanted. They now have last stone back in the seventh end, and they only had to give up one point. So after six ends, sorry, yes, after six ends, it is Team Vajrahuskins of Netherlands three, Team Magnus Ramsfjell of Norway three. So as we thought, viewers, we are having such a tight battle out there in this final here in Champagny. All of those scores of one point, one point. Don't be fooled. That does not mean we have had anything like a dull game. It means that neither team is giving up points very easily at all. We started off with 15 teams from nine countries. We have had representation from Sweden, Germany, Scotland, Switzerland, France, Italy, and a very young team just starting out are supporting the competition all the way from Kazakhstan. So we were delighted to have that team traveling such a long way to participate. We are now down to two. We have Team Vajra Huskins from Netherlands. They are up against Team Magnus Ramsfjell from Norway. And as we thought, neither team giving an inch out there. It has been so difficult to even generate chances to score two points. And here in the seventh end, scores are level. It is three points each. What will be our objective for N7 here? If you are Netherlands, you would be quite happy to have this situation going into the eighth end, actually. Scores level, you have last stone. You would like that very much. So Netherlands' ideal result here would be another blank end. And Norway realize this. Norway do not want a blank end under any circumstances. And that's why we've seen Norway put out two aggressive guards with those first two shots. Another exemplary end from Gautenepsta. Norway's best chance of winning the championship from here Hasn't changed much, really. They were hoping to score two in that sixth yep. end. Yep. But finally, yep. 
were probably fairly relieved to score one. Could have been a lot worse for them, but their strategy hasn't changed much, actually. Their best chance at winning this championship is still to try to force Netherlands to score one point here in the seventh end and then take their chance with one shot behind but last stone in the eighth. That's still their best chance of the championship from here. Netherlands with last stone here in this seventh end. They know exactly what Norway are trying to do. As we said, Netherlands' ideal situation is a blank end. If not a blank, then they definitely want to make sure to score two points here. But first, first idea is going for the blank end, and that's why Lohan Sukman being asked to remove those guards. No stones equals no points equals blank end. And that's what they're after. So I fancy we will see a few more hits from Netherlands. And from Norway, we will continue to see them putting stones out front. The last thing they want is to let Netherlands have a blank end. Norway would love to force Netherlands to pick up one point to give up last stone in the eighth end for the loss of one point. So Norway is setting up nicely actually. They need all that cover out front. They won't be too worried about that red just next to Valtor's foot, not yet. Important is they need that cover out front. And then later on in the end, I'm sure we, sh we will see Norway then sink a stone around the back of everything to put that pressure onto Netherlands to give up last stone for only one point. And good separation of those Norwegian guards, the yellows. You see, difficult for Mohan Sukman to make a double takeout on the guards. As we've seen all weekend, really, from the Norwegians, very careful stone placement, making it difficult for Netherlands to remove more than one guard at a time. Norway then just looking to replace that really long guard just over the hog line. And you can see huge separation between those two yellow guards. They're absolutely in line, but a big distance between the two of them. And that will, again, make it difficult for Jaap van Dorp to remove both of them at once. And now is the time that Norway is going to bring this game into the house. They are on stone six out of eight. Remember, what's Norway's objective? Avoid blank end. They're doing that by keeping stones in play, keeping stones out front. Ideal is that Netherlands forced to score one. And they can do that by getting a lovely yellow shot in close to the pin here, which they have. Bravo, Martin Seisaker. That is a great shot from them. Okay. 
Dit geel niet op onze achterste rode ook als je die uh, over de top gooit. Ja, misschien ook wel. We can see how quickly the momentum in this game changes. It's really been going backwards and forwards all game. As we thought, we've watched both of these teams already. Netherlands in the quarterfinal, Norway in the semi-final. We've seen that both teams are playing very nice, steady, precise curling this weekend. So not very surprising that this is such a tight game. The, the energy and the momentum swinging backwards and forwards. As we said, no time clocks in this event. That's more of a, a resourcing issue. You need a lot of volunteers if you're going to have time clocks. But actually, yeah, this game's progressing at pretty much the right pace. You typically expect about 15 minutes per end, and it is often the case that that goes a little faster in the first part of the game and this ends towards the finale of the game, the conclusion of the game. You do often see the teams really having to make good decisions, having to think about each and every stone. But actually we're pretty much up to time. We are at Skip Stones in the seventh end. It is the final of the Curling Masters in Champigny, the World Curling Tour event. You can see all of the scores from this weekend on the WCT page, that's worldcurlingtour.org. Certainly, from my perspective, I think this has been thus far a very fitting final. So a great weekend's curling. Two teams really playing at their best out there. And that's a nice throw from Magnus Ramsfeld. He's really trying to remove the angle. You can see that still provides nice protection for that yellow that's right on the pin. If Walter takes a run at that front yellow, all he's going to do is make a double take out on the yellows. Not going to be able to do anything about that short stone in the middle. So a very nice throw from Ramsfield. On the other hand, there may not be a better option for Walter with his first throw here. We have three stones to come, two for Netherlands. One more for Magnus Ramsfeld from Norway. A blank end looking a little bit far off from here. And that probably informs Walter's decision to indeed play that double take out on the yellows. Netherlands don't want to give up last shot, yep. only scoring one. And yep. moving out hard. these two yellows in front alles, boys, alles hard. gives them hard. the best yep. chance to try to yep. score two. Yep. 
thought that stone curling a little bit too much actually so not quite catching the right angle and now how the turn tables now a nice chance for Norway to put a lot of pressure on Valtra's final throw as we said a score of minus one to Netherlands here even if Norway steals a point not the end of the world for Netherlands they would be minus one point but they would have all important hammer in the last end statistically it then becomes a 50 50 game I know that you cannot persuade a Canadian person of that but statistically your chance of winning the game is really 50 50 whether you are plus one without hammer or minus one with hammer but some important stones to come before we get to that point and again he could not have gone up there and placed that much better Magnus Lansfeld take a bow sir you can see there's no draw for Valter there he can't outdraw that yellow I don't think he can curl enough to get to the yellow really and move it so I think looks like unless Valter can come up with yeah, some sort of triple takeout I'm not sure if that's available it looks like they are going to be giving up a steal here Netherlands and they simply want to make sure that it's a steal of only one. <laughs> a very thoughtful end here from Norway. Eight for eight, really well placed stones. Netherlands. I, I really don't think there's a chance to score two. I, I just don't think there's a triple takeout there. And that means then, okay, they have to accept they're going to give up a steal. And they need to make sure that they only give a steal of one, no more than that. Otherwise, their chance of winning the game, statistically, will start to drop. It will not be 50-50 anymore. Big final throw yeah. Yeah. in the penultimate end of yeah. the Curling Masters in Champery. Oh, Ooh, so that did get all three stones moving from Valter, but indeed that is a steal of one point to Norway. Beautifully played end from them, really set themselves up never allowed Netherlands a chance to get a blank and that is a decent result for Norway they pick up a steal of one and they are now in the position of being plus one without last stone it is Netherlands who are minus one point with last stone the score is going into the eighth and final end of regulation play it is Roberto Huskins of Netherlands three Magnus Lamsfield of Norway four We have been treated to a real feast of aggressive curling out there. As I said, the fact that you will see a whole bunch of ones on the scoreboard don't be fooled viewer that does not mean we have had a boring game it has been anything but it has just been really difficult for either of the teams to even set up a chance to score two points it has been a real 
Sunday lunch feast of lovely angles, lovely set up plate. We are in the final end of regulation time. We said at the beginning, I would not be surprised if this game goes to an extra end, and that is still very much on the cards. It is the Norwegians who are plus one, but they don't have last shot here in the eighth end. So their objective and their strategy for this eighth end, pretty much the same as the seventh. The blank doesn't help Netherlands anymore, so we can discount that. A blank for the Netherlands, obviously, they run out of ends and they would lose, so they know that Netherlands are not trying to blank this end. Netherlands are going to have to go flat out to try and get two. So if you're Norwegian, you need to make sure that Netherlands cannot score two. I'm sure Norway would be happy to win the game right now at this eighth end, but even if Netherlands pick up one point, we would go to an extra end, and it would be Norway who have that last shot. But before we get to that point, Norway have to prevent Netherlands from scoring two and winning the game right here. So Tobias van den Hork, he has been playing really nice stuff all afternoon. And he finds a decent spot with that red. I think they were trying to go around the corner guard or maybe they were going for that split to punch the corner guard a little bit further out and get one red already in the house. And we saw this again, didn't we, from Norway in the seventh end. So careful with their stone placement, making it really difficult for Netherlands to remove both of those yellow guards on the centre line, keeping those yellows yeah. far away from each other. Of course, this game is finely poised, isn't it? You feel like whoever blinks first. It could be them who is regretting it. I think both teams have to keep their focus. Even a not quite perfect shot now could be decisive. He's on target this time, Lorenz Hoekman. Excellent shot placement from Norway, but a fine throw from Lorenz there. Indeed, removing two yellow guards. But Norway, they don't panic. We have that nice yellow already in the forefoot. And look at those one, two, three, four stones all in a line, topped off. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Very symmetrical, but not for long. I don't want to speak too soon, but I think if Norway will look back on points where 
they really put themselves in a good position to win this game. I think it's this lovely placement of their stones making it really hard for Netherlands to get themselves out of trouble. Final throw of regulation time for Lawrence Hookman. Oh, and he just sneaks past that second guard there. Again, that huge shot placement from Norway. Bringing advantage for them. So now Norway has a good chance to put pressure on here. Remember, Netherlands need to score at least one to keep the game going, to bring the game to an extra end. And Norway trying to shut down all possibilities. Netherlands then now looking at two Norwegian counters, all behind cover. This is very elegant play from Norway. And again, Jaap van Dorp so close to picking out two stones with that throw. And this is all Norway can do. They just have to keep putting pressure on. If they play eight for eight shots, that's the best they can do. Give themselves a chance at either forcing this game to an extra end or potentially even stealing a shot. That big separation again. Another try for Jaap van Dorp. His final throw in regulation time at least of this game. He will again want to remove as many stones as he can, really. That's better. Okay, just about everything going there. And definitely cleared out a big space up front and cleared out some space in the forefoot as well. So that looks a lot happier, doesn't it? Super stuff from Jaap van Dorp. Netherlands were looking in a little bit of trouble there. There was an awful lot of granite starting to build up out front with a couple of Norwegian counters in behind, but Jaap van Dorp with a really lovely shot there, definitely giving his team a chance now. are down to skip stones in the eighth and will it be final end for the Champery Curling Masters 2022 edition. We have 2019 champions, Bartosz Huskin's team from Netherlands, up against the first time in the final here in Champery for Magnus Ramsfield. If they were at all nervous to be in a final, we have not seen anything to suggest that at all. They've played really beautifully, the Norwegians. Still asking the question of Netherlands. And at some point, Netherlands may have to make a decision. Do they want to really go flat out aggressive and try to win the game from here? Try to get two points or 
do they make sure they can at least get one and get to an extra end? This may be the decision point. No time out here at the regional championships, so Europeans or Pacifics, and at Worlds and Olympics, you have timers as well as you have a time out as well. And that means that you can stop the clock and your coach can come from the coaching bench for a one minute powwow together. If you're not too sure which shot is the best to play right now or you know, just to have a, a new pair of eyes on the situation but no timeouts here decision has been made Costly miss for Walter. That's not what he was aiming for. He wanted to get around that guard and just play on his own red in the front ring there. And he has definitely handed a bit of advantage back to Norway. I'm sure we will see them just try to cover that yellow again. You can see a whole bunch of stones over there on the right of our screen. X guards over there. Two stones to come. One from the man on your screen, Magnus Hansfeld. One more for Valtor Huskins from Netherlands. Norway in a pretty nice position just now. They will simply want to put another guard out front. Again, force Netherlands to make the decision. Do Netherlands take a risk to go for two points and win the game here? I'm not sure there is a shot for two points, is there? I think it could just be, yep, that Walter simply has to draw fully four foot for the extra end. Mm -hmm. So, very nicely played again. Eight out of eight stones for the Norwegians. No chance for the Dutch boys to score two points here. And again, a really carefully managed end from them. So are we going to have bonus curling? There is one stone to come in eighth end of this World Curling Tour event in Champagny. You see Gautin Nipsta waiting behind the house there. He's going to a stopwatch on this to give himself an idea of how fast this stone's travelling. I'm sure he's ready with his brush to sweep behind the tee if this stone's at all heavy. So a huge shot for Walter. This needs to be fully four foot to force an extra end. So the sweeper's standing back a little bit, but they seem fairly happy with it. We're looking for fully four foot. There, it's gripping down now, it's grabbing the ice, it's grabbing the ice. What a shot from Walter Kriskins. The definition of a clutch shot, a pressure shot. And Norway not giving them a look in that eighth end. Norway really bossing them around, but hats off to Walter Kriskins, making a beautiful draw to the forefoot to force an extra end. 
So happy news in the virtual club. We will have bonus curling after eight ends. As we thought might happen, the score in our final here in Champoury, it is Bertel Huskins from Netherlands, four. Magnus Hamsfield from Norway, four. in Michigan happy to see some bonus curling we are at an extra end it is a one end shootout whoever triumphs here they really will be the master team of Sean Puri. what a great final this has been as I said all those ones on the scoreboard don't let them fool you into thinking this has been a dull game it has been anything but superstar from Tobias van der Hoek He's been, he and his opposition, Galton Ebstadt, they have been setting up the ends really beautifully for both teams. And we are now at an extra end in the final of the World Curling Tour event in Champoury. It is Magnus Ramsfield from Norway who will have last stone. And that stone from Gauta just passing through. That weight was on purpose because he was just trying to move that red away from centre, I think. I don't think that was a mistake from Norway, but just that shot very difficult and doesn't always come off. We're in a one in shootout. Everyone enjoying that? Jehon. He says, Moi shot which I guess is Dutch for excellent shot for Walter, which it certainly was. Joy in the chat, she's enjoying a really good game from both teams. I fully agree, Joy. Carrie from Portland, getting up early on Sunday morning for some terrific breakfast Sunday curling. It's been a really delightful tactical game. This could be a nice one to watch again. Both teams very comfortable with lots of stones in play. And you could see both teams really trying to frustrate the strategy of the opposition. So for me, very nice tactical game this final. Combined with some lovely placement of stones. Objectives pretty simple for this ninth and extra end. Everybody wants to score something. If you are Norway and you have last stone, your ideal situation is nothing at all. Your ideal situation is that Magnus Ramsfield, he simply has to, as we would say in Scotland, he simply has to find the paint. That's your ideal situation. If you are Netherlands, your ideal situation is exactly the reverse. You want a stone right on the poppy, right in the middle, with a whole bunch of stones out front so that Magnus Ramsfield cannot get to it. And that's a lovely stone from Lawrence Hookman. We've seen both teams very careful with their stone placement, showing a lot of respect for each other and their hitting capability. Bendy Kramsfield then trying to hit as many as possible, but He'll be happy with just removing that first red there. I think we shall see Netherlands persist with another couple of stones to boot another guard. At some point they will have to bring the game into the house, but not yet. If Netherlands would put a stone into the rings just now, 
Those two reds out front are a little bit close together, and I'm sure we will see Norway remove the both of them. And that would really lower the chance of Netherlands being able to steal this extra end. So this guard is very much the right call. The stone running on a little bit more than his previous throw, Lawrence. And now we certainly could see two of these stones go. This is not the time for a speed wobble, Bendig. But he's a pro, doesn't put him off at all. And indeed, two red stones are now removed from play. So Netherlands a little bit running out of things to hide behind, but I still think, yeah, second guard is still the right shot here. Again, if you went into the house with this stone, Norway will just keep drilling away at that front one and they have what, four stones left to make that double takeout. Your chance of winning the game gets much lower. So this is a much better idea. Let's keep putting out some double guards out front. More likely to get a half shot or a funny angle for Norway by playing this way. And again, that really nice separation. Good stuff from Jaap van Dorp. Those stones miles apart. Very difficult to remove both in one throw. And we realize you have a choice of curling competitions to watch this weekend. So we'd like to thank you for joining us here in Champery. I know there's the, the World Mixed Curling that's taking place in Scotland, in Aberdeen. And my friends in Oakland Club over in California, they are having a glitter spiel this weekend. But gosh, I spoke too soon, didn't I? Even though that was lovely shot placement from Jaap van Dorp. Martin Sesaka, he is determined to get one hand on this trophy. And huge smiles from the Norwegians. What a shot that is. That makes life significantly nicer for Norway. We also have an international wheelchair curling event at my home club in Vetsikon. There's all kinds of curling this weekend, but only here in Champagne do we have the virtual club and that nice lady who talks about the game. So this is now really about as good as Netherlands can do because of that fine shot from Martin Seisaka. He'll be happy to remove the pressure and yep. remove any red stone. Which he does. But no harm done. There's still heaps of space for Magnus Samsvill. I'm sure he will be steadying his nerves already. He knows what's coming. So does Gauta Nebstad. No need to discuss. He knows exactly what he needs to do with his final two stones. Oh, Marco's in the chat. Hey, Marco. I hope you're recovering well. Marco asks why they're playing on a side sheet. It's simply to do with the cameras, Marco, so the cameras don't move around. The cameras are over that sheet. So that's why we're playing the final there. It's not next to the barrier. It's one sheet inside that, but that's why. All Netherlands can do really is 
give themselves a chance here. They have played eight very nice stones. But nice setup play from the front end and really fabulous double takeout from Martin Sesaka. Means that Netherlands options are a little bit limited now. Yeah, Mark Magnus can safely ignore those stones over there on the right. Good for him to find his weight with this first throw. That's exactly where they said they wanted it. And look at that with a minimum of sweeping that would have been precisely T line. So Magnus winding up his throwing arm to bring this game over the line. We have two stones only to come. It is the extra end of the curling masters here in Champery. Yeah, you need to force him to play about it. You can also ignore those stones over on the left of our screen. Yeah, I think that this is the best idea in a fairly limited situation, thanks to that superb double takeout of the guards from Martin Seidsicker. I think this is Netherlands' best idea indeed. Let's just follow that stone just thrown by Magnus. They want to have a tiny bit less line so that this red will be nudging up against the yellow, but hopefully lying short and yeah, really just force Magnus Ramsfield to draw to the eight foot. This will be the final throw of the competition for Dutch skip and fourth. Walter Ruskin's superb campaign the 2019 champions have had. This hasn't quite found the same line, I think, as Magnus is stone. But I think he's... Oh, wow, they've found a very happy place with that, though. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I wouldn't go anywhere near that red. I think there's far too much risk of bashing into your own yellow. So let's congratulate Van Huskins on doing his absolute best to give his team a chance to pinch this game. But Magnus Flamsfield, he was surely building up his nerve for this final throw for the whole of the extra end. Winding up his throwing arm, he needs to get this fully eight foot. And no mistake there, he's even just about covered the hole. Phew! Well, that was an exhausting one from a, from a good perspective. And finally, we have new champions out there. And they look like they may have a plane to catch, so that could be why they're racing off the ice at pace. But our new champions are Gauta Nebstad, Bendik Ramsfjell, Martin Seisakar, and Magnus Ramsfjell from Norway. Superb final. I hope the Dutch boys aren't too disappointed. They really did themselves proud there. But indeed, yeah, the Norwegians galloping off to the airport, presumably. But wonderful performance from them. We saw them really strongly this morning in the semi-final and they have absolutely built on that in the final, hardly putting a foot wrong. Very worthy champions. Everybody proud of Team Ruskins. That's nice to hear from you, Siobhan. Uh, Sue enjoying the game as well. 
So that's it for this year from Chambry. We have new champions. Norway retained the title though. It was Wallstad's team last year. It is Magnus Ramsfjell's team from Norway. First time champions in Chambry for them. Congratulations to them. Thank you for joining us. Bye for now.